Now, uh, I want to show you the alternative to having to do a full rice. Uh, some people don't teach it. I really like it. I, I'm not going to derive it, but if we took minus the log of both sides of a Ka or Kb expression, we would end up with what is called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. No, not the David Hasselhoff equation, the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. And this can be used with only a couple of situations. For one, you have to have a weak and its conjugate present. In other words, we need to be in the buffer zone. Okay, the buffer zone has a weak and its conjugate present. Now, there's a form for a weak base and there's a form for a weak acid. Now, if we took minus the log of both sides, we would end up with the acid form of this, okay? And it gives us a shortcut. So if we were starting here and we need to end way over here, instead of having to follow the maze through DSE and all of that, we get a shortcut at least on the equilibrium. Okay, you still have to do the doc saves, but you can do doc saves Henderson Hasselbach. Okay, we're really stretching these acronyms here, okay? It's a shortcut through the maze, and you are allowed to do it only under a few conditions. One, you identify that you have an acid in its conjugate base. This can be the buffer zone of a titration, or you could have a weak acid plus a salt of the conjugate base. That's why it was so important. That's why I wanted you to recognize what a salt of the conjugate base looked like. Okay. Now, you also have to have a situation in which your initial concentrations are greater than 100 times Ka. In other, ones, we're, in other words, ones in which we can neglect that plus and minus A or plus and minus B. So if those are both true, you can skip rice and use this Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which is really just your Ka rearranged. If you take minus the log of both sides and do a little rearrangement, you get this equation. pH is equal to pKa. P, that little p just says take minus the log of. So that's minus the log of your Ka. And that's important to know because some tables report pKa values instead of Ka values. Plus the log of your conjugate base over your original acid. Now, the base version of that is pOH is equal to pKb plus the log of your molarity of your conjugate acid over your molarity of your original base. So that would be the base form of that. And I, I personally like this equation. Um, I think it's really helpful. And we will move into those calculations when we get to our next series of slides, because I just realized I'm out of slides on this. So short little video to finish up some final details. Um, let me do the one thing though, since we have just a second on this video. Um, if you take a look at this, if you are at the equivalence point, by definition, if you are at the equivalence point, those are the same. So what you would have is plus the log of one. So the log of one, hopefully you know that, is zero. So that's another way of proving that your pH is equal to your pKa at the equivalence point, right? Because whatever this is, let's just say it's 0.5 over 0.5. That's one, the log of one is zero, that goes away at um, halfway at the volume of your equivalence point. I might have misspoken and said at the equivalence point, but that was wrong. Halfway to the equivalence point, these two are equal and pH is equal to pKa. All right, that's it. We'll start talking about buffers next. Until then, this is signing off.